Hey, what's up? Alex here. The first time I did a keyboard and mouse review video was all the way back in 2021 for the Logitech MX Keys and Master 3. After more than 3 years, today I'm still using the Master 3 mouse for my work setup. For the MX Keys, I stopped using it early last year, not because it's bad or something, it's more of myself wanting to try out all the different popular mechanical keyboards on the market. But I still carry the MX Keys Mini in my bag whenever I go into the office. All my ex-colleagues know that I'm using this keyboard in the office. My first product into the MX series is actually the MX Anywhere mouse. I remember its version 2 at a time where it's black and gold colour. For this, I literally carry it with me everywhere, even when I'm travelling overseas. So you can see that I'm quite a fanboy of the MX series, even till today. When I know that Logitech is running a marketing campaign for them, I'm more than happy to share my long-term user experience of the MX series. First of all, in terms of the materials they use for these products, it still holds up very well, no signs of wear and tear. But of course, you still can tell the difference between this and a brand new one. On those rubber texture surface, you don't have that sticky feel. Next is the battery life, still very healthy. I don't feel that I need to charge them at a very regular basis. This differs based on usage for each individual, but for me, I never felt annoyed by the charging frequency. For connectivity, I use the USB dongle at home, plug into the Logitech docking station. When I'm outside, then I use Bluetooth. For both, I don't have any issues of losing connection and have to reconnect or redo the pairing. The quick switching to another pad device with a press of a key is also super fast. For some keyboards, you will have a sense that your typing does not match well with what you see on screen. There is like a very slight delay. But for the MX Key series, I never encountered this issue before. With the software throughout the years, I keep seeing enhancement with added features to it. I think that it's one of the biggest selling points. Later on, I will show you some of its cool features. Let me jump into the Master 3 and briefly explain what I like so much about the hardware. While the MX keys may be more debatable because of individual preference, for the Master 3, to me, this is the GOAT. And I'm sure many will agree with me on this one. This is a mouse that you can use on any surface, including glass, with or without a mat, and it still feels good. The design and ergonomics is perfect for me. For those with really small hands, then this might be too big for you. Both the vertical and horizontal scroll wheels are very useful, feels good to use them. 3 hotkeys at the thumb area and one at the top. This is the version 3 and the clicking sound is very noticeable. I know for the 3S version, it comes with silent clicks, which is what many people wanted. Personally, I didn't upgrade to the 3S because I'm kind of waiting for the 4 to be released. For the MX keys, they come with two layouts, either the normal 100% with numpad or the 60%. The normal MX keys is a very low profile keyboard, very minimum travel on the keys, and the typing experience feels pretty similar to the Apple Magic keyboard. I actually got the least typo on this keyboard because you can see that there is a small spacing between the keys, and if you look at each individual keys, you can see that there is a round concave matching the shape of a finger tip. I don't know how to explain this feeling, but I really like this touch. For those that prefer mechanical keys, Logitech knows that there is a growing hype and demand for this and released the mechanical keys version. This is sent over by Logitech, I've never used this before, so I will just quickly let you listen and compare the sound for both. I want to specially mention a very underrated feature on both of these keyboards, something that I miss a lot while using other keyboard brands. Apparently, they have a built-in motion sensor so that it can sense that when your hands are about to press the keyboard, it will wake up the keyboard already. In other words, there's no delay at all. The very first key you press will be registered. Unlike many other keyboards, you have to wait a few seconds after pressing the first key for it to be alive. What really sets apart the MX series over the rest of the keyboard and mouse is actually the software features. If you prioritize functions and convenience over everything else, then I'm pretty sure you'll be totally sold when you see what it's able to do. To access all the cool features, you need to install Logi Options Plus. Okay, then going into each device, you're able to configure the hotkeys based on different applications. So for example, if you are using online meeting tools like Zoom or Microsoft Teams, uh, you might want to set the horizontal scroll wheel to something more useful like volume controls, then have a button to mute or unmute yourself. And another button you can use to turn on or off your webcam, which you can set using a keyboard shortcut using Shift, Command, V, okay, and that's the hotkey for Mac. 
Likewise, if you are using office applications like PowerPoint or Word, you can set a totally different profile. Like the horizontal scroll view, you can change to zoom in or out. In your hotkeys can be your uh, copy and paste, then or, or you can use the uh, redo or an undo. Something new that they have added just last year is the Logi AI Prompt Builder. First of all, you will just assign one hotkey from either the mouse or keyboard to open the AI Prompt Builder window. On the left are some commonly used prompts that are already pre-created like rephrase, summarize and so on. All you need to do is to put the text here and there are a couple of optional parameters that you can define such as the length, uh, tone or style for the response. You can also create your own recipes you want. All these can really speed up your productivity by a lot. Right now, this is based on just ChatGPT. The LLM model used is 4.0. If you have a ChatGPT subscription, you are able to log in and the usage will go back to your account. If not, it will be based on the free version. In the future, they plan to allow users to choose their own model. But let's say right now, if you want to use DeepSeek, what you can do is to use smart actions, which is basically like configuring an automation rule where you have a trigger and actions. A couple of these are still in the roadmap. So what I will want to do is to just use a device and use a button trigger first. Okay, confirm trigger. Under the actions, I can choose application, choose Google Chrome, bring to foreground, confirm. Then another action is also going to the Google Chrome and to add a new browser tab. Okay, I can choose confirm. The next action I will want to do is to put in the text for the uh, DeepSeek URL. So I can choose text. Okay, next I will go to the DeepSeek URL and just do a copy and paste. Basically what this step is to just paste this whole string down. Okay, next action, I will want to use the keystroke action okay, and just basically hit the enter key. Okay, in this case, I'll click on start recording, press enter and stop recording, click confirm and you have four, all these four actions to be performed with just one press of a button. All these steps will be programmed to run with just one press of a button or based on whatever you set as a trigger. Super convenient. Because they have the feature to record your keystroke actions, so technically, as long as the task is able to execute just by using a keyboard, you are then able to automate any of these repetitive tasks. And if you want to have some ideas on what are the possibilities you can do with this, there are a whole bunch of pre-configured templates for you to test out. Logitech knows that all of these are their unique selling points, so I'm pretty sure they're going to keep adding features to it. I specifically requested from Logitech for the mechanical keyboard as a giveaway. So if you guys like to win one, just make sure you go ahead, subscribe to the channel and drop a like on this video. Most important is to leave your Instagram username down below and don't respond to any YouTube spam accounts. I will be contacting the winner in a week's time. Big thanks to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Alright, now to give an overall conclusion, I think that if you have been using those $20 to $30 mouse keyboard combo and is looking to invest in a better keyboard and mouse for productivity work use, the MX series is a very safe bet for you. In terms of aesthetics, they all have a very minimal design and the color choices will fit to any desk setup teams. They also look very professional if you need to carry them outside to a work setting. If you're someone that don't care anything about aesthetics and just look at functions and features, then I would say the MX series is the number one choice and they do come in at a price point that I think is very reasonable. Because of how popular they are, I believe you can easily borrow one from your friends or colleagues if you really need to try them out. And if you're also a long time user of the MX series, share your experience and what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!